Hello everyone, the Flying Scotsman here and welcome to this video. Um, I am here at the uh, Roadshow, the um, Visual Impaired Roadshow, whatever it's called, at uh, North East Sensory Services. And um, I was here a couple of years ago. Today we've decided to visit uh, Dolphin. We've decided to visit with um, a rep from Dolphin. And, um, well, what, what we have here is uh, Supernova. And um, it certainly seems to have came a long way from uh, the days of uh, Supernova 4, <laughs> which is what was installed when I was at school, kind of showing my age a wee bit there. Um, now you have touchscreen support and um, other things. Uh, you can get, you can get a dolphin keyboard here, um, which will help operate uh, the software. So you've got uh, different magnification modes by pressing one of the buttons. Excellent. I like the uh, full screen. So this is kind of like your standard Logitech uh, internet keyboard. In fact, it's kind of designed like one of the ones from like the 2000s. But instead of your usual back, forward, favourite keys and, you know, something to bring up the calculator for whatever reason, you have instead... Um, 124, 116, 100, 108. Okay, so um, apparently this changes the speed, not the volume. Um, you have keys here that um, operate supernovas, uh, various features. So this would normally, this play button would normally bring up uh, your preferred media player and start playing. Um, that, that, that read, that's readback. It is on this keyboard. Yeah. So reading finished. Press escape to continue. Well, it reads from the cursor and you, at the end of the document. So. All right. So press escape to continue. Start of line. T. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Reading finished. Press escape to continue. And uh, you might have noticed there that she's actually speaking in a Scottish accent. Now this is something that um, I did ask about. And yes, we do have more regional accents. So um, it's not like back in the days of eloquence where you had to listen to your computer sounding like Mary Poppins and, uh, you know, talking about how a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. But uh, the, this keyboard is actually, you know, the, the key switches are not bad at all. I mean, it's a standard rubber dome. Um, I wonder if I could read that back. Okay, I can. You can, you could make Supernova Beatbox. I believe that's the name of uh, a wee village in Wales. Um, no, it doesn't start with a double L. No, it does. <laughs> um, but no, so not a bad keyboard, not a bad bit of software. You can get it as just a magnifier, magnifier with a reader, or you can get the speech. And they even have some larger print keyboards in alphabetical order. Kind of like the big keys keyboards of the 90s. And again, these do not feel bad at all. Just standard rubber dome. And uh, yeah, they, they feel perfectly uh, fine for typing on. So, I mean, this is all great progress. The keyboard... Quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Will you shut up? Um... So this keyboard is uh, forty nine ninety nine or thirty nine ninety nine when bought with um, Supernova software. Um, so yeah, it's it's really quite good. I mean, I could do something like this on my uh, tablet. If we see in comparison, um, I'll try and bring up uh, the Windows magnifier. Um, I don't. I mean, this is how good it is. I don't even have it on my taskbar anymore. I mean, once. I mean, this is one of the transformer style ones it's a Dell venue it um so I have a keyboard when I'm keyboarded I usually use a magnifier um if I'm using it in tablet mode though um you've got your stuff oh. I'm doing well doing well um oh, James I've got to get rid of the keyboard um mag There. So, yeah. Oops. That's that's how good it is. It makes the tablet fall over. Um. So it's it's really not the best. And if you want to zoom out, 
then you've got this to deal with in the top corner. How do you get around that? You close it and then you've no magnifier. So it's really quite cumbersome. And you know, I do feel that Windows with magnifier needs to be better optimised for touch screens. Which is where software like Supernova can come in. So, uh, so there we are. That's um, that's Supernova versus the the competition. <laughs> but um, I'd like to thank uh, this. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dolphin for um, actually uh, helping me out today. Um, so yeah, let's move on to the next. So, so now I'm with um, a guy called Paul from. Uh, where are you from? Is it? Uh, Sorry. Optelec. Optelec. So we're taking a look at uh, this wee guy here. And um, it's not only is it a CCTV, but it has a touchscreen and optical um, character English. recognition. Fiona. Selected. Yep, so if you hit on the X on that, I'll take you back to the previous screen. And so. Have to reload it. If you press play, it'll carry on playing. Allowed. Enjoy reading long documents with text to speech. So Just please, so now yeah, that's uh, our the Scottish accent. The screen to our Aye, right enough. Speech feature and enjoy listening in a natural sounding voice. A natural sounding voice. Still needs a wee bit of work, I see. <laughs> Nobody in Scotland says natural. <laughs> I must admit, like I said to uh, the Supernova guy, um, I did... Um, I did appreciate the fact that um, regional dialects are now a thing because, you know, get so sick of, uh, like, I mean, even Go excuse me, Google Maps still does it. Sounds like a, a warden from uh, Borstal or something. Do you find reading tiresome? Would you like to come? Do you find... Yeah, it's not picking up on that one. The whole idea is that it, it like is to meant to jump to the next. To request a home demonstration of a clear view, see Sarah Rich or the on. So you can obviously save multiple pages on there. In fact, you can save books or two if you want to see them in on that side anyway. And you can change, obviously, the speed of the voice. Speed down. And with Fiona's case, we do normally have to knock the speed down a couple of notches because it's a little bit fast in this natural form. Aye. But, uh, but yeah, there's numerous ways of uh, interacting with the touchscreen. So you can do it via the controls, which are, or you can do it naturally and then just tap on the word Aye. you want. And it'll when reading, on reading using that. magnification becomes too tiring, simply sit back and listen as printed letters, newspapers and magazines are read aloud. Well, sounds a little bit quiet Enjoy now. reading long documents with Slow. text to speech. Just place a magazine or letter beneath the camera, swipe the screen to activate the speech feature and enjoy listening in the natural sounding voice. Yeah, that natural again. <laughs> read, there we go. Your finger on the touch screen. Oh, well, you've just demonstrated the point and read. So, overview yeah, that goes back to overview mode. Yeah, overview or you can off. zoom in back out of it. So, there is a lot more. No, it hasn't got, hasn't got pinch and zoom. All right, yeah. Would you like to combine my. So, I've just been able to select that, um, that paragraph, even though it's not the first one there. So, like, I could. Uh, Try getting her to read that half a paragraph. Enjoy all the bare clear views. See, I had to just add X Y table for two. Yeah, exactly. And we'll do a demonstration of a clear uh, or view. smaller in one in one single shoot. But obviously, it won't. Uh, it, it's only, the camera is and the software is only as good as what it can see. Oh well, I mean that's that's uh, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, absolutely. Aye. So I mean this. So I mean this is quite a contraption here. Um, it's it's a lot different to the sort of uh, stuff that I was using at school. I mean, yep. I remember when colour was, you know, we ended up with a colour CCTV from Horizon in 1996, and that was amazing. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, moved on a little bit since. Then. So, how much would you be for a contraption like this? Uh, three thousand three hundred ninety-five pounds. It is our top top end machine. There's a lot of machine in there. There's a Windows. To, uh, Windows 10 underneath. Uh, ah, so it's uh, using an embedded Windows 10. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks very much. So, so you're using an embedded Windows 10. Mm. Could you get the software and put it onto your Windows 10 computer and have a camera on an arm kind of a situation? Yeah, we do have a we do have a software available to, to, to put it in, uh, into a separate uh, machine and via a laptop. Uh, we don't, I'll be honest with you, we hardly have a requirement for it, but absolutely possible. 
I mean, I think I think that'd be useful for students certainly. I mean, when I was a student, I had an Optiverso, and it was all right. But I mean, trouble is, I mean, that required a very powerful machine. It required a Pentium for two point eight gigahertz, and this was two thousand and six. Yeah, exactly. Uh, my laptop was a dual core, so it would run. It was only a two gigahertz, but I mean, obviously, it would kill the laptop's battery life. Yeah. Even though the Verso had its own battery in it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, and the whole idea you know, about modern technology is now the this with the six-inch screen has basically got the same sort of functions as the 24-inch screen. So it's miniaturised, so it has OCR and mm -hmm. ultra-high-definition camera. So effectively, the software that we've got in there is running an Android on this hmm. instead. Um, and, and the same question goes: Could you get the software standalone? No. No. Aye. No, not for that. Not for that, because it is a bespoke. Uh, we've, we've, we've licensed the software to work in this for And again, you can't, you can't currently add third-party applications to it. Even though it is Android, you can't. Aye. Facebook. Oh, no, it's a... It's, uh, a it's, it's locked down. It's a bespoke device. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, when we... we well, there, there is, you know, there is uh, options in the future to, to open it up to third-party yeah, software. Yeah. I mean, that could be quite useful to have... I mean, because nowadays... I mean, I remember getting a, well, I've got a pocket view magnifier from 09, and um, I, you know, when, when I was getting this, it was um, for the, uh, it was, um, you know, kind of with a view, it was the um, employment support officer from here actually helped me get it at the time, uh, North East Century Services, back when it was GSB. Um, she helped me to get one, and my first question was, well, could I not just use my phone camera? And she said no, because the uh, the pocket view has a better camera. Yeah. I think now it's not necessarily the case. I mean, I find myself using my phone's camera to take pictures of things to magnify, so cooking instructions or what have you. Yeah. Um, so well, well, the camera technology has obviously improved uh, uh, like every year. It's improved, uh, with the, especially with the macro side, which is what we're, we're using here. Aye. So, I mean, if I mean, you're getting phones now with uh, different modes, and I mean, this is filming in 1080p right now. Mm -hmm. um, can go up to 4K. Not that it would be true 4K. I don't believe for a second that this can do true, true 4K as as you would no. want it. Um, but certainly with a macro mode, I think um, there will be a market for uh, screen magnification for Android, you know, such as this or the, the wee device that you've just shown. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, as, as a manufacturer, uh, you know, they, this is still, even though uh, it's price point, it's one of our most popular machines. Aye. So the software on its own would obviously come in at a lower price point and be more attractive to, you know, people buying themselves rather but, than. But you'd still be buying it with some form of hardware, whether it was in this format or a, a, one of the transformer formats, which is a small independent camera system, which is built to a laptop. But if but it would still aye. have the software. If you were buying it on a, it. if you were buying it on a phone, though, for example, you'd have the hardware, you'd have your phone, and yeah, 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 yeah. aye. Um, which would uh, make it probably more affordable for people buying themselves rather than yeah, exactly. but the local yeah, authority yeah. buying it. Yeah, well, we, yeah, as a company, well, we, we would only sell it with the hardware. We would only sell it as software. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. No. Um, I know it's licensing and what have you. Yeah. So this is a more kind of standard CCTV, or am I a way to be surprised yet again? No, 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 it's just standard, just a portable CCTV. So it does exactly what any other CCT you've ever seen does. It uh, magnifies it, but the only difference being is that you can fold this one down flat uh, and take it away because it's transportable. That is, that's very good for the likes of your university students. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's useful in that regard. And there's a few different uh, flavours that one as well. Well, I say, I say that, but um, I mean, I hate to kind of sound political but I mean obviously with stu disabled students uh, allowance being obviously canned in England yeah. probably might have shifted a few less of uh, of these south of the border um, I'll be quite honest with you we, we do very little with the, with the education market uh, in, for, that, for that reason because the, the budget is down there anymore so our, our main market uh, obviously through uh, the uh, uh, private uh, uh, we don't even do a lot of access to work for that same reason. It's, it's one of those things is this really the sad. Is, is not there anymore. It's really sad that they've done this. I mean, at the moment, 
at the moment we still have access to work in Scotland. We still yeah. have yeah, we, um, we still have um, disabled students allowance. You know, I'm very thankful for those things, but unfortunately it doesn't. Um, I don't know how long we'll have that. But this, I, I kind of like how you've got a high contrast mode. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, you have, you have, uh, you've, you've got standard high contrast modes of, uh, of you know, black, white, white, and yellow. But it's not, it's not just black and white and white and yellow and what have you. You no, have no, a high contrast color mode, yeah. which is uh, yeah. something I've not seen before. Yeah, we do. Um, and then blue. I kind of like that. And then, and then I see you have got the. You have got a brightness tool. You have got a freeze frame. Yeah. And uh, obviously overview mode as well. Zoom, I zoom I do like the overview mode because I mean on on older CCTVs I found myself getting lost. Yeah. Um. So you know it'd be brilliant just to be able to do that, and then you know can see what I what I've gone. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing all these are pretty much more of the same. I mean yeah, this one's yeah, quite portables. Yeah, just full full range of different portables, different sizes, thirteen inch, seven inch machines. Are you from Hull? Machines. No, not at all. North oh. east, but not uh, not that far down. All right. Um, so I see something that kind of looks like a portable USB player or something. Um, no, it's a, it's a clear reader, so it's just like the end machine, but without a camera. Uh, sorry, without a screen. Ah, so yeah. it's purely, yeah, purely OCR, uh, but for people with pretty much no vision. Uh, so basically, kind of like a more compact uh, yeah, yeah, it's a, version it's, of the Scan yeah. R. Uh, well, it, the, the clear reader, so it's, it's a smaller version of the speech, which is what you were looking at to begin with. So it just, it just has that functionality without a screen. Uh, oh, so it's just a radio-sized device with a camera based on the front of it. So you I scan, did see that. Scan your document underneath it, and uh, and then she'll read it out. Yeah. I'm guessing she's got the same voices as um, exactly the same software. So um, Windows so build, win, Windows underneath it, and the exact same thing. It's just in a different. I mean, I've always, um, I've always been quite excited about Raspberry Pis for that reason, that you could actually make these devices. I mean, obviously, you'd have to recode it for uh, Debian, but... Um, oh, yeah, that is definitely Windows sound. <laughs> um, so these are all different magnifiers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, is there anything really differing between them apart from size? No, no. They're, uh, I say apart from the one I just mentioned, which is OCR, then the rest of them are different. Uh, but they're, they're all, all very similar portable magnifiers for sizes. Aye, this one looks quite swish. That's about, it's, uh, it's, that's about six years old. So, I'm surprised you haven't seen that one before. Pardon? I'm surprised you haven't seen that one before, because they say it's about five, six years old, that one. Aye. Oh yeah, the Compact 7 HD. Yep. Aye, of course HD was kind of the buzzword was, of this decade. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now it's now it's all going to be 4K and it's it's uh, yep. you know for the for the market you're aiming for it's like why would we use that? <laughs> yeah. No, I know. I know. But um, well, thank you very much. Well, um, for the video, um, I guess I'm going to sign off. So thank you everyone for watching and please join me for my next video.